Hello guys, it's me again. I'm Nafid. What I will demonstrate in this video, how to install Apache Guacamole on Linux. And the version of Linux that we're going to use in this case will be Ubuntu Linux. Then once we've done that, we will demonstrate that how can I access remotely uh, a desktop, for example, a Windows 10 or some other desktops. Uh, but we will use Windows 10 as an example. Move to Ubuntu website and download Ubuntu desktop. Install it on the ESXi server as a new virtual machine. You give the name for the virtual machine the way you wish. Now, in our example, we name it as Ubuntu Guacamole. And then obviously you will select the um, the guest OS family, in this case will be Linux, and you scroll down, you will find you have Ubuntu 64-bit um, Linux. Select the properties for the machine, so in our case for CPU memory, and then select what um, network adapter you're going to select. Now you need to also upload the ISO image you downloaded earlier. You upload that image and you're going to use it to install Ubuntu uh, Linux in this case. Then once you selected that image, that will be installed. That should take you about five minutes to install. Once you've done the installation, you're happy with that. You're going to start your Linux um, Ubuntu Linux machine. Now you have the machine uh, initially installed, so you created the machine. You're going to start your Ubuntu Guacamole Linux server. And after the start of the server, you're going to complete the installation of Ubuntu. Once the installation is completed, you will uh, need to change the IP address initially. Plus, we will need to install the uh, Open SSH so we can remotely connect to the machine. And the reason we do this is uh, it's easier to copy paste text uh, from text file um, into that machine. Now, in this case, I have selected my name as the username. So the username would be Nafid, and your name is the full name for that specific user. You will then select and choose a password of your choice. Um, make sure that if that is publicly accessible, the password should be uh, secure. And should be difficult to guess. Once the full installation is done, you will be presented with uh, some screens. We're going to open, uh, we're going to restart the server first, uh, the Ubuntu server. And then once we've done that, we will log in with the uh, password you have selected earlier. And the first step we're going to do basically, we will open um, a terminal. And for that, because we would like to issue some commands. Now, the first thing we would like to change is the IP address when you're going to make it fixed IP because this now is a dynamically assigned IP. We need to find out what is the network interface card. In this case, is ENS160, and we will need this one uh, when we edit in the net plan. We will need edit the uh, network manager file. So this is to set the IP address of the Open to Linux in this example. So you change to etc. net plan and you open the YAML file, the network manager file, and you will uh, add text underneath the, um, the text shown here. Uh, YAML is very sensitive, case and space sensitive. So you're going to apply that setting. Now what you're going to do, you will install open SSH server. Um, that will make your life much easier. So basically once we do this, we can remotely connect and it's a switch to that uh, open to Linux. So that's the username. I'm just showing you an example from Windows machine. Uh, you supply the password you have um, set up before. Once you do this, now you're gonna start doing the update, the upgrade. So we're doing the update now, and we will find how many packages need to be updated. It says in here 144 packages can be upgraded. So then we will do the upgrade. Um, that process will take you probably five minutes or so, but I um, just run it quickly here. Now, the first installation or the first steps you need to do is to install um, install the basic package for Guacamole. I will leave a link uh, for you to can you can download all the commands from uh, from the link. Once we've done that, uh, we will continue to um, install 
the Tomcat. So that's the first thing we're going to do, uh, installation of the Tomcat 9. Now the Tomcat 9 is the latest version as of today. Uh, probably when you run this video later, you might find an updated version. But Tomcat 9 was the uh, the latest version when we've done the installation of um, of this server. And they will install the rest of the packages within the Tomcat. Um, once we install the packages on com in Tomcat, um, we will uh, run the updates for these packages. We're gonna run. Um, we're gonna start uh, the Tomcat service. So we're gonna just start from the system control, uh, Tomcat 9, and we will enable Tomcat 9 as well once we um, we run uh, that command. So we're gonna run enable Tomcat 9. Now Tomcat is installed. We need to install and download the Guacamole uh, from the Apache website as now um, the latest version of Guacamole was 1.3. Once we download the Guacamole, you will follow the installation instructions shown in the video. Once we've done that, I'll also update you. I will leave you a link uh, at the bottom of the video so you can download all of these commands. We can copy paste them uh, with no problem. The rest of the instructions are shown on the screen, so I'll leave you to it. At the end of the video, we will come back and demonstrate that once the installation is successful, we should be able to connect to the Guacamole server and we should be able to access the resources remotely from outside the office or from outside your home and that would be an easy way uh, that doesn't require any VPN server or any client to be installed it's only from within the browser of your desktop
Now, in this case, uh, we will use MD5 to encrypt. Um, I'm just showing you an example. Um, so I'm going to create a username, um, a password. It's called just my password. Surely you will not use it as um, in production. But my password with encryption, open, open SSL MD5. Then the prompt has to be copied. Keep it on one side. Now, the value for that password is going to be used inside uh, the user mapping.xml file and that file uh, is going to be uh, basically consulted for the usernames credentials as well as for uh, you know all the remote connectivity the machines i'm showing you an example here the example here showing is simply we added uh, a remote desktop 192.168.1.101 and uh, now that is uh, the username and, and the password would be uh, what we have selected, but that will be encrypted. So now, as an example, uh, we create a username in the user XML file um, instructor and the password is my password. Now we added this machine as an example. We are able to connect remotely to that Windows client. At the end of the video, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in future videos.